We're working to prevent terrorist attack in Lagos, Commissioner of Police has said. And the PDP Board of Trustees is to meet on Wednesday as they plan a peace panel. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. Sequel to the threat by bandits to attack some states in Nigeria, including Lagos, the Commissioner of Police, Lagos Command, CP Abiodun Alabi, has placed the State Intelligence Bureau of the command on high alert. The NSCDC also placed its state command on alert following intelligence reports that elements of Boko Haram terrorists, as well as those of the Islamic State's West Africa province, ISWAP, have heightened plots to attack the nation's capital, Abuja, and five other states, including Lagos. In its reaction to the security threat, Lagos state government said it was not aware of the threat. Well, joining us to discuss this is Barrister Wilson S. Sangwedo. He is a CPP National President Association of Licensed Private Security Practitioners of Nigeria. It's so good to have you join us, uh, Mr. Wilson. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm happy to be here. Great. It's not every day we have the honor of having people like you on the conversation, um, you know, because, I mean, I think the, ma the major headlines uh, as of... Uh, the past few months is that of insecurity, if not if not kidnapping. Um, but today, I do not necessarily want us to talk about the problems, as we are we are all aware of what the problems are. Thank goodness, if uh, some of the abductees have regained their freedom as of today. But then let's talk about Lagos first and foremost. It's the economic capital of the country, and there are allegedly threats of. Um, insecurity this were put on high alert as it's as it is Ekiti state also is boosting some security based on the report of terrorist uh, attacks that may or may not happen but let's look at the homegrown problems in Lagos I've heard people complain about uh, influx of people unknown persons uh, under the bridges uh, under the flyovers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, how can we, as Lagosians, um, guard against these threats? Because there are some that are homegrown, and of course, there might be some that would be coming from outside. But let's look within ourselves first and foremost. I think basically we must realize that each and every one of us is responsible for our own security. Anywhere we go, as we move from place to place, we must have that at the back of our mind. Of course, we have the law enforcement agencies that are saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that um, our states are secure and the country is secure. But the primary responsibility of ensuring that we are safe and secure lies with you and I. So that means we must have some level of security awareness, everyone, children, teenagers, youth, the adults, because that's what is going to help us at this very trying time in our country. So as we move from, to, from place to place, we must keep our eyes open. We must also rely on our gut feeling, understand the dark spots. There are dark spots everywhere. And as much as possible, we should try and limit our movement at night. Because most of the problems we have are put at night when our our spark of observation and our ability to, to recognize what is happening around us becomes very low. A lot of us are, are a lot of us have been attacked at night because before we know it, they are already on us. So this is time for us to be extra careful. We must let our people, our family members know exactly where we are going to. This is the time for, for telling our family members or our friends. I'm going somewhere. You must let them know where exactly are you going to. So yeah. if they have to look for you, they must have, they must not have to look for you. Then a lot of us book book Ubers to a boat to move around. And what I always advise is always learn to share your ride with somebody in your house. Let them know exactly where you are going. So God forbid, if you book an Uber and somebody else turns up, how are you going to be traced? 
So the other part of the problem basically is that most of us just believe all is well, all is not well. In our various communities, we must be part of the security effort to ensure our communities remain safe. We've had instances of where some estates have been attacked. And the areas of concentration will be what the criminals term as sub-targets. So when you are located in an area that is far from town, in a very bushy area, you must be part of the security effort in your community to ensure that your community remains safe. These hmm. are no ordinary times. This is the time for us to be focused on our security. If we are living in a community, if they are asking us to pay dues, pay dues so that you can get the best security hands. But it's kind of like in most communities, when you ask people to pay dues, they go to sleep. But they only come to pay dues when the particular house is attacked. Because it becomes very obvious that their security is on the line. Let's not wait until bad things happen to us before we start cooperating with our fellow members in our community. Mm. It's also a time for us to know our neighbors. Then when we see things that are abnormal in our community, we must, we must have a police control number to call. Many of us, if they ask you what are the police control numbers, many of us don't know. So it's an opportunity. We must interact with the law enforcement agents. Information, information gathering and sending information at the right time is very key hmm. for our survivors at this time. Let, let me backtrack and go to where everybody would expect that we start this conversation from. How did we get here? I'm asking this because the present administration rolled into office on the wings of making sure that they will deal with insecurity, especially Boko Haram. Um, this was one of the reasons why many people flooded out to, flocked out rather, to vote for President Buhari. Um, so, but here we are in 2022, looking for ways that we can protect ourselves. Recently, I, I think um, the, the Governor Masari of Katsina has said that we should all find ways to pr protect ourselves. But pots, pans, bites them if we can. The most ridiculous thing I've heard. We also remember that the governor of Zamfara had at some point said, let's get weapons. We would acquire them for you if need be. And, and so I'm wondering, how did we get here to sink this low to a point where we're even asking the citizens to do things that are not constitutional? Um, I think basically um, everybody took things for granted. The government took things for granted. You and I took things for granted. This, this is not the time for blame game. But then you need to also understand the porous nature of our borders. Our borders are not secure. I think that's, that has been very challenging for, for as long as I can remember. And then when you have a situation whereby anybody can walk into our country without being checked, without being stopped, People can come with all sorts of arms, substituted arms. Then it becomes very difficult to check the influence of these criminal elements. Unfortunately, the criminal elements have walked in, driven in, moved in through our porous borders into our country, into our various communities. They are actually in our midst. They live with you and I. Of course, they have their camps. That is where they plan and they carry out their strikes on us. And that is where we need to change the narrative now. This is not the time to blame the government. Of course, the government may not have done its best, but it is the time for us as a people to rise up and say enough is enough. We have what it takes to put this thing to an end if we are all determined to work together as a team. There's only one thing the government needs from us. That is information. By the time we start changing our attitude, and we now become more security conscious, and we as we, as we see something, we say something. But it's not enough to see something, say something. We must know exactly where to pass that information to. The, the state security service is published over and over and over. If you have information, please send this information to these various helplines, and we are ready to move into action immediately. Mr. Sangbedu, but there's also, Mr. Sangbedu, I'm sorry to talk over you. There is also the situation of trust between citizens and security agents where people have reported cases and incidents. And then, of course, these people 
were, a, were traced to, traced back to, the information was traced back to the person who gave out this information. So uh, yes. there's that uh, lack of trust within, you know, between these two. Yes, uh, how, yes, how, do you, you know, how do we deal with that situation? Okay, there's an aspect that has to do with the criminal element where you have robberies, where you have attacks. And we also have the issue of bad elements everywhere with the law enforcement agencies. They are here, and the, the police is one of the agencies that will come out and they will, if they know a particular officer has, done, has not done well, they go, they take, they go out of their way to make sure they deal with such officers. So my advice to Nigerians is don't be deterred. Don't be discouraged. Because of incidents you have seen where some people you you pass information and it's put back on the streets. You also need to understand how the criminal justice system works. It's very key. You know, there's this law in which said everybody is regarded as innocent until proved guilty. So at times all these criminals are arrested, they are charged to court, and on technical grounds, they are released. Don't forget that even the criminals, they are also entitled to a lawyer to defend them. If they cannot afford the service of a lawyer, the government will provide them, we have the legal aid council that will provide them with the service of a lawyer free of charge. So on technical grounds of these, these criminals can be released and they are back on the street. But that should not deter us, please. When you have information that can help the law enforcement agents, agencies to carry out carry out the activities, don't deny them of that information. It's, it's very key. Pass information to them and then uh, leave them to do what they need to do. Um, the SSS are there, the police are there, the military are there. There are various helplines that they've, they've advertised over and over. Please, let's take advantage of these helplines. And I'm sure as we do that, because by the time we start getting tired and say, oh, we pass information, they will not do anything. They start getting worse. Now we're talking about the solutions. And part of the solutions is don't be tired of giving the information to um, the law enforcement agents, because you don't have anyone to give that information to. You can't handle it yourself, so give information to those that can handle it. I'm sure with what is happening, they will definitely do their best, because that is very key. Don't be discouraged. I, I, let's talk about traveling. Um, a lot of people are afraid of traveling now, because you do not know what's going to happen uh, you know, on the freeway. We all we recently heard about the kidnappings, um, you know, in different parts of the country. Uh, there have been attacks on, uh, well, in the, in the southeast. We also had that recently. Um, and, and, but people have to move. Businesses have to continue. Uh, in that regard, what needs to be done? Again, I, I like to always ask this question. Have we ever had it this bad? So much so that it seems like we ha all have to resort to self-help. When we have security votes for governors in all the 36 states, we also have um, security agents, we have a chief of defense staff, we have a chief of army staff, we have the DSS, like you rightly stated, we have, um, you know, the, the, the mobile police officers, we have the normal police officers. I mean, we have so many um, security agents on the ground, but it's very, it seems very difficult for this information to be used because I don't want to believe that the security agents in Nigeria do not know where these people are or where they're going in and coming out from. There should be intelligence. What, has, what have we done? What has the you know, um, security agencies done with the intelligence that has been on the ground? Even the media has had wind of some of these intelligence, um, you know, but we don't see anything happening. How, have we ever had it this bad in the country in terms of insecurity? Um, I, I, I keep on saying basically that uh, when we're going to have a change in government, the tenure of the administration of one government is coming to an end. This will definitely get worse. It, it happened in the time of the former president, and he had to delay elections by one month. Uh, within that one month, he actually brought the terrorist elements to their knees. But at that point in time, people were tired and said, enough is enough. Let's try something else. Between now and the next election, we are likely to go, we are likely going to have an upsurge in crime. And I call on the uh, government security agencies. This is time for them to work harder than ever before. But we as a people also must not be tired of giving vital information to the government of the day. 
And I believe as the elections, as the elections are approaching, we are going to have more criminal incidents. And I believe the government will also do its best to make sure that they bring it, they bring the crime rates to, to, to a manageable level. The government has its role to play. We are also, as a people, also have a role to play. But there's also something that we're also forgetting, which um, we also need to look at. Now, in the advanced countries, the first line of defense is are the private gas. In those countries where the private gas are armed, they become the first layer of defense and it frees up a lot of law enforcement officers. It frees up more of the military personnel to carry out their core duties. When you look at the number of policemen, one third of those policemen are involved in VIP duties. They are involved in duties that are not normally regarded to as core policing duties. Mm. As the president of the Association of Licensed Private Security Project, I will be making, we have, a, we have a draft bill we are working on, and we are pushing for our gas across the country to be allowed to carry firearms. Of course, we have instances of where some state governments are, if not even encouraging their own citizens to carry arms. But that should not be the first thing. Let us free up, let us free up more policemen, let's free up more soldiers to carry out their core duty. Um, one of the ways you can do that is align our gas. We have about 4 million gas. The total number of law enforcement and military uh, serving personnel across the country are not up to 1 million. Those 4 million trained guards are available to the government to assist in reducing the, the, the crime rate as it were. What's your, what's, what's your take on state policing? Will it, will it in any way help? I mean, we've seen paramilitary, we've seen states come up with their own secu security outfits. We've seen Amatekun, we've seen um, the one in the north. We've also seen the ESN, uh, not ESN, I beg your pardon, Ibubagu in the southeast. Uh, uh, what difference has it really made in terms of helping our state policing or the idea of state policing? You see, when I saw that we had various regional outfits coming up, I, I knew that it may be very difficult for them to get far. For them to get far, they must be integrated into the national security architecture. Until that happens, they will not go too far. You know, um, if the issue of state police you ask yourself this question, why is the government hesitant in allowing this to work? Because they believe that maybe the state governments may use those state police to, uh, for their personal uh, advantage. So they prefer a police force that is centrally controlled, as it were. But we need to see that as a nation and agree on the type of policing that will work for us. But community policing can work. But for it to work and be effective, everybody within that framework must understand their role, the role that they must play. Outside the country, they get a lot of information about criminal elements that are, criminal elements that are operating within their, their environment. Everybody understands their role. And it starts from when they are young. Their level of security awareness is start building up from when they were young. So we also need to go back to the drawing board at the level of Children that are in nursery, primary school, uh, secondary school, university level, what efforts have we made to ensure that there's proper security education? In, in, in some parts, like in, in a place like in a place like Israel, everybody in Israel is trained to carry firearms, and they are regarded as soldiers. So everybody knows their role. So it, that's a country where they don't have too many people, but. Their, 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 their dedication to their country is something that you will marvel, you will marvel at because of, of the, way they, the, the way they train their children from when they were young. So we also need to adopt some of those practices because that's what will actually help us get out of this. We should see security as something, as, as, as our business, everybody's business. It should not be restricted only to the government 
security agencies. The company security agencies are not telling us the number of people they are losing. I don't know whether the, the military have come to tell you how many people have been killed. They won't, they won't tell you. Mm. Because when you go into the, the military, you sign, it's, um, it's like a covenant you sign to, to protect your, 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 your country. Mm. And there also a lot of policemen have, have paid the supreme price. But on our own part, we also need to support these people. I, I know they may not be giving us the best, but the more we support them, the more they will come out and they will do their best. We also know there are bad elements. But let's not use the bad elements to judge the entire law enforcement agency. I've had interaction at the highest level with the Nigeria police, with the Department of State Security, and I know they are determined to ensure that Nigeria still remains safe. But we need to support them. We don't have any other SS, uh, uh, Department of State staff. We only have one. We don't have any other police force. We only have one. But we need to support these people and make sure that they live up to their responsibilities. That's the way to go. Let's talk about what's at the core of this insecurity because, you know, they all... There's always that saying that if you cannot treat the root cause of the problem, then you can't just put a plaster on the cancer. Um, what do you think is at the core of this insecurity that has grown and become a hydra-headed monster? Because it's one thing in one region, it's another in another region. Um, what do you think that needs to be done? I mean, because it looks like Mr. President has recently been quoted to say that he's done his best um, and, of course, he also had given off the vibe that he cannot wait to go and rest. So where does that leave us as Nigerians? And again, what should be the root cause of the problem that we should be tackling in order to drain the swamp? And we'll look at the first root cause, look at poverty. There's a lot of poverty in the land. And so most of us, that any income, we know how much we spend on a monthly basis. I've heard people say that they don't know how long they can cope. When you have a situation of somebody earning about 100,000 or even 200,000 a month, unable to feed his family, then what are those that are earning 30,000 a month? How do they feed? I had someone telling me, calling me that now they only in the house, they only eat once a day. And what food do they eat? You, you, you will cry when you see some food. All the, your meal is just Gary and Grano, that's what they eat. So maybe they take soup or they take rice once a week. Because people also have to devise ways of seeing how they survive. So poverty is the first thing. People, the poverty level is high. The rate of inflation is high. Look at the um, exchange rate now. It's, it's, going, it's, it's getting very high. And people are speculating that before December, it may hit a thousand naira to a dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, as the inflation rate is, is, is rising, poverty will be on the increase, companies will not be making profit, they will, be, they will, they will, they will, they will want to cut costs, they want to lay, lay, off, lay off workers, and all that. So poverty is, is one level that may be the, that is the cause of our present, uh, our present issue. Then you also have the influx of the, the criminal elements that are come from outside the country. They are virtually everywhere. And they 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 are they are operating under the guise that they are pastoralists, where they are actually not. Mm -hmm. Because some, some people will even tell you that the original uh, pastoralists we know they don't carry guns, they just carry stick. But this one they carry sophisticated weapons. So you ask yourself, are these the same one that we always knew? And the answer is no. And you and when you hear them speak, you know they are not from here, they are from outside the country. But we we already got it wrong from the beginning. By making our borders porous, and they already came in, and they already with us. At times, even those that ride, ride, ride the cars, when they carry you and they talk, you know these people are not from this this country. They are already with us, big time. And that's why the government, I, I read the newspaper report of the government mooting idea of banning Okadas. Hmm. You know, if you ban Okadas, those people are up the streets, so you think. But they're going to look for other ways of any income, and they make. The crime rate may even triple if that does happen. Mm. Because on those people that ride Okada, people that are doing it just to survive. At times you see, you see uh, trailer loads of people from the north coming here just to, and they come with the Okada to ride Okada as a means of earning a living. But they believe there's more money in the south. So mm. those are some of the issues. You also have graduates that have finished school. They don't have work. 
and then the issue of courtism is you have call, you have court groups at the primary school level, you have court groups at the secondary school level, you have court groups at the university level. Some parents, because of this this knowledge, have taken their children to private schools, thinking that there are no court groups in the private school. In the private school, it's even worse. Really. So we are in trouble. Finally, do you think that the government of President Buhari has failed Nigerians in dealing with or in keeping the promise of securing us, especially now that we're gearing up for elections? Can we say that the government has failed? The expectation from our people for, for, for this government was very high. The mantra of change was what you and I caught up with to ensure that this government comes into power. This government still has an opportunity between now and May to change the team. The former president, Jonathan, did that in one month. He changed the narrative, but people got tired. My advice to this government is they will not wait until the month of the election to start doing what they should be doing now. They still have time on their hands. Mm. And the are crying, and they want a secure nation. It's the primary responsibility of any government in any part of the world to make sure they provide security for their citizens. The government must discharge that responsibility. And once the government has been able to discharge that responsibility, the hope of the average Nigerian for this government to be revived. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, Barista Wilson Esagwedo is uh, uh, the president of the Association of Licensed Private Security Practitioners of Nigeria. Thank you so much for being here with us and having this conversation. Thank you very much. All, all right. Best. Thank you. All right. And thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be discussing the PDP's plans to bring all aggrieved members of the party to Gaba. Stay with us.